Well, hello there, everybody. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to another day in my 2020 beekeeping season. We're going all the way from winter through to fall. Showing you what I do here in the deep south, down in Louisiana. Day by day. So it's not a how-to video, it's just me logging my adventure. But look, if you happen to pick up any tips and tricks, that's wonderful. And if you have any for me, leave me in the comments. Here's one thing we got going on. You can smell it in the air. Full bloom right now. Look at the tallow coming, man. The tallow is coming. Oh, that's crooked. The tallow is coming right behind it. We usually have a break. I would prefer a break because of the system I use uh, here in my little uh, apiary. Um, a break allows, allows me a chance to super up and evaluate one more time. But uh, we may not get that. Really quick, all I got to do today is look at one hive and see if I got a queen. Um, this is the last of the splits. This is a late, late time to be evaluating a split. Guys, I wanna talk to you real quick about my operation and how it's progressing. I basically wanna uh, give you a status check where we're at and what we got and where, are, where we stand so far in the season. Since some of you have followed me on through and have been watching my hives and watching what I'm doing, Let's take a quick glance. So the majority of this is going to be me just going over it, and then we're going to go through that hive. Uh, bees are rocking and rolling. Uh, going out and getting that privet. You can smell the privet in the air. I mean, it's strong. And then I'm going to explain uh, a little something for you guys so that you know, so that you know I know the pitfalls and the advantages of what I'm doing. So here, let's, let's take a look and see where we're at. So as we go through the yard, I went through this little thing yesterday, and that's a that's some old drums. I got my two frame on. That was just salvage salvage a couple cells, and hey, we got a queen out of it. That's wonderful. Okay, so here's my one through five hives, and you see the one on the left. That was a split, uh, and it's 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 getting down slowly. Uh, it's probably gonna stay a single though. Then I've got three in the middle there, and those are hives that came out of winter as singles or nukes, okay? And they're already built up, you see one's got a super. Then the one on the right is a, is a, the queenless side of another split. It's actually, um, it's actually not in that second deep yet. It might be going in there now, but basically it's a single. So it may be one that goes on into winter uh, as a double. The three in the middle, they should be production hives. There's a little nuke we took off the mean hive just to get numbers down and salvage a cell to see if it worked. We didn't see a queen in that yesterday, so. Uh, but that was just something I threw together. It wasn't a, wasn't a priority for me. And then behind my little berm of trees here, this used to be a motocross berm. I got a little swarm on that one left side. That's my crepe myrtle swarm. I got another hive that was uh, number six that had a queen and number eight that was full of bees, didn't have a queen. That's a combined. They seem to be going on up in the top. This privet should help them finish. There's my double stack nuke we did. That's a utility hive superseding the queen right now so, so hopefully on that double stack the, the hope is that we'll have a nice utility hive with uh, brood and such and uh, if it makes it to winter without having to be used or any kind of split being made off of it which it probably will uh, it'll go into winter like that and then we'll have two hives to use in 2021 then you see the next stand over I got that's a 11 with the supers on it that's a hive that came out of winter as a single then the next one is a combine, that's 12. We combined it with a, a one of the queen fail splits. Uh, then the next one over, another single that came out. Then the last one over there in that single, that's that nuke. That thing's really doing good. And rather than put it in a second deep, I may put an excluder on it and super it up and see what it does. The next one's a combine with a failed queen split. Then the next one is 17, it's a single. It'll be like that till winter. I'm gonna leave 17 alone. There's no reason to even mess with 17. Just see what they do. Get the remnant of the bad bees out of it. And then we'll uh, we'll see what it does in about three or four weeks. That should have enough time to get them out once the flow's going good. And we'll see if they're mean or not. Then I got a nuke. That's the little swarm I put in there. Um, because it was filling up a, uh, it wasn't filling up a 10 frame at all. That's that little itty bitty swarm we just caught. And then we got number 20 with those Amsoil stickers on the right. We got to check that one. That's where we're checking for a queen. Uh, now, that thing has been without a queen for a quite a few weeks because that was in, uh, a split I did with five of them. And uh, 
we gave them a we gave them a frame and they remade some queen cells and so it's been without a queen for a while then you got two now this next last stand we've got a couple more splits that we did and uh, they're doing okay they're starting to work up in the deeps pretty good so we may get a chance to put some supers on them then the middle one that's a single is old nuke we moved in there they'll probably fill that single and that'll be where they go from this season be another production high for next year the last hive was a single we built that on up but then the, the, the second from the right that was a uh, nuke that really really exploded and I think it's gonna be able to be supered up as well so then I got the couple next door we know about the banding hive oh look blackberry starting to come in let's see that mm, no it's still tart wow oh that tart but next door we have the old banding hive that's filling up that'll fill up some supers and uh, then we got a little tiny swarm over there. That's a utility queen. There's another one. And then uh, number 28. That's one I may look at today. It swarmed. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see if we made a queen in number 20. That's our last one. That's been without brood for quite a few weeks, so the numbers are probably way down on it. It's a moment of truth. I don't expect the numbers to be very good on this hive. Unless they made a queen and she's been laying that I didn't see, but... I will say they're up at the top putting in honey. They're kind of loud. That's not a good sign. But a while back we were in a loud hive and they had a queen. That's full of honey. Wow. And they're back packing it with nectar. I'm not hopeful for this one to have a queen. Just because of the circumstances. Yeah, you see they're... She would definitely should be laying by now. They're just flying around. They're not covering the, the comb at all. I think this is the one the cells might have been on. Yeah, there's some of the cell. There were cells all over the bottoms like they were swarm cells. But you see they emerged. No sign of any larvae, and I hear a good hum out of them, and I don't see a lot of bees in the bottom, which is understandable. So we're going to have to give them a combined would be best, but they're too deep already, so we may have to consolidate. Let me take a look at the bottom, but I think what we're going to do is they will consolidate them down and combine them. I don't know who I'd combine with, though. Ooh, could combine them with 17, that would be scary. I'm gonna make a, create a monster there. Let's still check it though. So we're gonna look on the bottom, see what's down there, cause I'm gonna have to consolidate. Yeah, there's no bees down here. Okay. We're going to go get something and we're going to combine them. So, I gave you a status of all the hives. And one thing you'll see in this is I want to talk about my system. Again, not a how-to video. So, I'm not telling you this is how you do your bees and how you split and all that. What I'm saying is how I do it. And there's a lot of pitfalls with the way I do it. This time of the year right now is when I begin to sweat. I see we got a nectar flow with the privet. But is it going to be enough? And if the privet don't come in good, I'm in trouble. I'm not in trouble. And bees aren't going to die, but I'm not going to make a ton of honey because I now have to deal with waiting for the tallow flow to build them up the rest of the way. And that's not what we want. That's the surplus flow. So, let's talk about my system real quick. I choose to do basically walk-away splits. They're, they're more than walk-away. I, I do check them and monitor them, and I, I move queen cells if I need to and such. But they're basically the same, mainly because I allow them to make their own queen and I split them. Now, this year, that might have hurt me doing early, early splits because I didn't do them with significant numbers. I had a lot of brood, so I banked on that. And without significant numbers, it takes them that much longer to really get robust. I didn't allow them to be really robust before I split them. But at the same time, I had swarm preparation and some of them going on. So I split them early and I did prevent swarms. But with the splits I do, I want you to know that it's not that I don't 
I'm against feeding or anything. I'm not against any of that. I'm not against pollen patties and all that. I just know the amount of honey it takes for me to, uh, to get through my year of sales when I sell honey. So with that being said, I understand how long it takes. See, it takes me a lot longer because I don't requeen with fresh queens. Bought queens or even grafted made queens by me. If I bought queens for the amount of splits I did, it'd be $300. In my operation, I'm not prepared to spend $300. It would definitely, I would have all my hives built up by now. I wouldn't sweat it this time of year every year because look, this whole honey season could be a bust um, because I wait so long. Making queens, it's four or five weeks before you even begin to generate any brood and another two more past that before you bring out bees. So your, your numbers should actually be more. And I may have made a mistake this year with that, cutting them down early because basically I split them without significant numbers. But they've had plenty of time to build up. So then you say, well, you don't feed either. I understand feeding. I could requeen and I could feed and I would build these hives up so much faster. And not even so much as feeding sugar water once the nectar started flowing to some extent. Pollen patties down. So there's a money savings for me uh, and a time savings for me. So you don't have to feed them that just to be a backyard beekeeper. And basically that's what I am. These hives are in my backyard and I'm a beekeeper. So I'm a backyard beekeeper. So I'm not, I'm not like a big giant honey production guy. It's just a little side gig. I know what it takes for me to make that amount of honey. And uh, I can afford it most of the time with my bees. But I had a, a year. I don't know, three or four years ago when I had my hives, I had a lot of hives, and I had more hives, but we had a, a, a worse, we had like no privet flow, and our tallow flow was either dry or something, and didn't make the, we didn't make the honey, didn't make the honey. And had I have fed and maybe put palm patties on and boosted up my brood nest, sure, I could have. Um, I didn't. So, if you're wanting to boost your honey production, absolutely, you need to have them built up, ready to rock and roll, by April, they need to be booming. Splits have need to be done. Feeders need to be applied. Pollen patties need to be applied, and you will have robust hives coming for the flow. You'll stack four supers on each thing, each each hive, and you will make the honey. That is no doubt. But just not where I'm at with the time and the money and everything else, and and requeening the same way. And there come there may come a time where I do requeen uh, and buy queens, but right now. I can't see $300 in Queens right now. Just can't see it. So it's it's not worth it for my operation. And I've got a few spares. So I go through that status and I explain that I understand where I could have been had I fed and had I put pollen patties on and had I bought new Queens. I understand that. And we'll make sure you guys understand that I know that. Um, and that, that's, that's why I just, there's some reasons why I don't necessarily do it. I'm not against it. And hey, maybe when I retire and I, and I bump up to a bunch of hives, maybe at that point I will, but later down the road I could. What I would like to do though is I would I would like to start maybe grafting not a lot of queens, just grafting, you know, maybe 10 queens, or you know, grafting enough for 10 queens, because you, you know, you may not make them all, but, and then being able to build up some, um, some boxes early and make my queens early. And we can do that down south. We, we've got the ability to do that with our weather. That would be nice, and then provide my own queens. Um, but it just hadn't got there yet. Plus, Cayman Reynolds bought up all the dadgum queen cups on me. And mine went on back order, so I couldn't even try it this year. I'm just kidding, I like Cayman Reynolds' videos. Uh, I questioned him the other day on wearing that Alabama hat, though, and he's in Tennessee. I, mean, I know UT is bad, but goodness gracious. Alabama? Don't be a bandwagon. Well, he explained to me he's not. It's his father was born down there. Though in the comments, something like that. I don't have a strong one to combine it with. I, the singles I have are all swarms. Mm -hmm. So what we do is con consolidate them into one box, put them on top of a single that's strong or stronger, and then go from there. I just gotta go evaluate where I'm gonna put them. It was a split and the bottom is requeened and really doing well she's already got eggs in those in that drawn comb and in that drawn comb 
and I had a you remember from a video we put a another deep on here and seeded up a couple frames but the privet flows on it's, it's a long shot to get that filled which it's okay I know it'll go into winter as a single or, or, or as a double and be fine and it won't it just won't be a honey production this year but shoot I got this one from number 20 with no queen and bees they got bees so they got plenty of open frames up top they got honey stored up top and that's all these guys were doing in the second super was drawing it out and putting nectar in so heck let's put a second deep on it with a few extra bees she's got plenty of brood coming out here let's see what they do in the next three weeks so we do the typical newspaper combined it's a little breezy out the classified is going to have to do for them today It's gonna to have to go on dry. You can't find good spray bottles these days at all. There we go. I'm gonna say that. So the switch really don't matter because now I gotta move it. There we go. So they're on there. So now with the box on top. I need to give them some of these frames back in the bottom one because I really don't want to waste them. I got a honey frame here. Stick it on the outside. I got a fully drawn one for them to go on in here. So the middle has got space to lay. Sorry about my arm there, but so let's see if number five moves on up in here. I'm gonna go get the rest of the bees from this hive and put them in. We'll cover them up and we'll be done. Now, look, when it comes to feeding, I did feed. I fed last year. I let y'all let y'all all in on something, but uh, I had an entire, basically, bee yard kill off. Um, state inspector got involved with it. State pesticide folks got involved with it. And we're not sure if it was malicious or non-malicious. Maybe it was accidental. Maybe it was malicious, we're not sure but about 20 plus hives and like 17 of them were killed. Uh, the ones on the end, the very end survived and the ones with entrance reducers survived. That made me wonder. There was some herbicide spray down the power lines, but it all happened in one night. They were all good on a Tuesday and on a Thursday morning, every single hive was dead. I'm talking major hives, small hives, every single hive was dead three inches of bees on the bottom boards and uh, all that equipment and wax and frames that was all no good I had to dump all the bees that was the part that I uh, said you know maybe I, I was pretty stressed out I didn't stress at first but I really got angry later and realized uh, I just need to back off and, and readjust and I did readjust and by the grace of God we built up the next year with a cutout or two some swarms and I fed I fed through the spring and built up my deeps and uh, we pulled 100 gallons of honey and we built our apiary back up but I had to refocus and I was mad I don't know what happened to this day we don't know what happened the results from the pesticide swabs uh, came back with nothing so it was a it was a situation a lot of equipment lost um, man it was a lot of a lot of preparation to get them back where they're at. It was tough, but uh, I fed that year, so I know the I know the ways to feed them and build them up. And when I need to, I will. And if I need to requeen with bought queens, I will. So that's a long, drawn-out explanation. But I wanted to take y'all and help you understand why I do what I do, and I understand. I understand this year, right now, I'm kind of sweating it that if the privet doesn't build up at least six or seven more of these hives, I'm gonna be dragging up when it comes to the honey production this year but that's okay that's okay it's not my livelihood um i'd be a little frustrated maybe but it could be my own fault for splitting early i split early with not the best numbers but uh that's okay they've had a chance to grow and what i learned a long time ago or what i was taught was that the hive when you split them and do walkaways or you let them make their own queens that the hive without the queen they tend to be the one that does well well, what I found over the years is that's not the case. The queen 
the old queen that goes, she seems to tend to be the one that really builds up and makes me honey that year. And this year, that's what I got at the pond. But what we've seen is two queens that have been superseded. It's because they're old. So it's another pitfall you have. A lot of these, a lot of, I've learned that a lot of these ones that had to make their own queens, they're new queens for next year. And I live with that. And I go ahead and, uh, you know, I, I build them up and get them ready for winter. And what happens is you can see my singles that come out of winter, those really turn into production hives. And the splits with the old queens turn into production hives. And I kind of know that's where I'm at. Uh, it's, it's frustrating sometimes making your own queens and, or letting them make their own queens, but it is what it is. You know, it's just how I do business. All right, guys, I made a mistake. Um, I, I went ahead and took out good drawing comb that's being drawn and replaced it with honey frames. Well, that's not the thing to do right now. Why do you think that is? At least, why? I don't want to do it. It's nectar flow. Last thing I need is more honey in here. What I need to do is give them space to expand. So, well, that's a nice frame of honey. It doesn't need to go in there. All right, this hive's done. Combine, I gotta put all this stuff back. So for anybody new or hadn't seen what happens when you move a hive and reorientation and all that good stuff. So what's happening here, all the bees are still out, right? And I moved it. They're sliding over to that nuke. You see them, they're coming, they're, they're going around a little bit. And then you'll see them slide on over to the nuke. The nuke had not even close that much traffic. This nuke is a swarm that I brought back from Livingston. It was really, really small. That I put the itty bitty piece of comb in the frame that had eggs. We're getting ready to boost their numbers up. So all those bees coming back, they'll just ease over here. They'll be accepted. It's too small not to accept them. They're field bees. They're not out to rob. They're coming back with stuff. So this time of year, they should be just fine. From this angle, you can see them sliding over. Some of them are investigating the box. So all the bees will go back somewhere. So we're in good shape. So I think it was best to combine them with a a stronger hive rather than a small nuke and maybe we get a a double that can now produce if it doesn't it's it's no no loss well guys that's a wrap uh really quick like just had to go through a hive today and check for a queen but i went through the hive that was looking for a queen number 20. this is one that was a split and it uh, didn't requeen gave them a frame of brood they put in plenty of cells still didn't requeen so so i chose to recombine it i looked through a few hives and i found one uh that was strong number five that was a uh hive that made its own queen and it's strong that's a good hive and the queen side of that split is out at the dairy farm it's doing well it's already got uh one or two supers on it so yeah i probably should have done it without newspaper um just because there weren't that many bees left and in the end instead of having a deep full of foundation on top they had a uh now they got a deep full of um good comb and i put some nice comb in the middle for the queen to lay in so as soon as they break through the newspaper she'll be up there um if i'd have done it without the newspaper She'd have been up there quicker. I was just on the phone literally a little bit ago with Joey Rawls. Um, Y'all need to visit his page too. Joseph Rawls, R-A-W-L-S. I'll put a link down the bottom and uh, I'll put his name on the screen. But we were talking about that. And newspaper combines, ah, I've done them without. It's just as easy. So but anyway, that, com that, that, that combine is now done. And all hives are either queened up or combined back. And really what I should do is if I don't make a queen and I did this on some is just immediately recombine them I did that on the other three that didn't make um, so that's four that didn't make out of uh, 12 that's not the best odds but you just should recombine them if they got a ton of bees I'll give them another shot and that's what I did with 20 and I also did it with six and six worked out 20 didn't so that's 30 to 40 maybe 35 percent whatever four of 12 so that's not the best odds but that's part of doing splits where you let them make their own queens so that's it that's the day it's done all the hives are settled for honey flow now for nectar flow everybody's either doubled up or singled where they need to be or nukes are set um just got to monitor growth now and add supers i may very well try to take some of those singles that really get big and uh and put the put an excluder on and a super and see if that works i mean guys that run singles it works for them so well, guys, I've been long-winded enough. Time to go. Time to end this video. I appreciate you guys sticking around. 
I appreciate everybody watching. I do appreciate all the thumbs up. If you like this one, go ahead and give this one a thumbs up as well. And uh, share with your friends, your family, anybody just enjoys watching bees. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon, and God bless y'all.